This is a very quick, high-level introduction to a comparison of the Bayesian or Bayesian and frequentist or classical uh, statistical frameworks. So in the world of Bayes, the paradigm is we start with some prior belief about some something we want to learn about, like the mean of a population distribution. And then we combine that with some data that we observe. And from that, we get an updated belief, also called a posterior belief. Um, so this word posterior helps emphasize that we're taking an after sampling perspective. Uh, so we're more technically conditioning on the observed data, the actual data that we observe in our data set. And then we're thinking about uh, this belief distribution. So given our updated belief, we can ask questions like, uh, what do I believe is the probability that the true mean is bigger than one half? And this is often written in notation that can be sometimes a little confusing. Um, it's something like this where uh, we have a probability that here mu, the Greek letter mu, uh, usually represents a mean greater than one half conditional on the data that we observed. Uh, but just to clarify, this mu here is not really representing the true population value. It's really representing our belief about the true value. So this is a probability with respect to our new posterior belief. Um, but here, again, it's sort of saying, given the data that we actually observed, so from this after sampling perspective, uh, what do we think um, are different probabilities of different values of the mean? Now, from the frequentist perspective, it's also sometimes called a repeated sampling perspective and that we imagine, uh, for example, you know, we know the true mean is 0.9 and maybe the sample size is, sorry, that should be an N, sample size is 15 and maybe some other things. And then we're interested in if we take, you know, data set number one, so one random sample from the population. Uh, and then we could look at, for example, the sample mean, and maybe it would be something like 0.6. And then as a thought experiment, we could imagine taking another random sample, get data set number two, you get a different sample average, right? Because we have different numbers in our data set, another data set, maybe another uh, value of the sample average, and so on, and so on. And the interest is in the properties of estimators and confidence intervals and other uh, statistical statistics <laughs> over these repeated samples. So you might be interested in, you know, if I do this a hundred times for a hundred different random samples and I get a hundred different sample means, uh, are they sort of generally centered around the true value of 0.9 or do they tend to be too low or too high? Um, or we could ask questions like, 
you know, given this true mu and sample size and everything, what's the probability that the sample average is bigger than one half? So in the frequentist paradigm, we're thinking about everything from the before sampling perspective, where here uh, the sample average it's computed from the data. So before sampling, each observation is seen as a random variable. So then the sample average is also a random variable. So we can see, you know, sometimes it's bigger than a half, sometimes it's less than a half. Um, and there's different probabilities of being bigger or less than a half. So we can ask this question, what is, you know, given a particular data generating process, what's the probability that the sample average is bigger than one half, thinking about it from this before sampling perspective, or similarly thinking about just taking lots and lots of different random samples and looking at sort of long run averages. Now, from this frequentist perspective, if we asked this Bayesian question, what's the probability that mu is greater than one half? It doesn't make sense because we've assumed there's just some fixed true value of mu in the population. Um, even if we don't know that it's 0.9, it's just some fixed number. It's not a random variable. So asking what's the probability that it's bigger than one half doesn't really make sense. Either it is bigger than one half, and the probability is just 100%, or it's not bigger than one half, and the probability is 0%. Um, but we don't really, it's not really an interesting question that can get an interesting answer. Similarly, from the Bayesian perspective, this frequentist question about what's the probability that the sample average is greater than one half is not an interesting question because from the Bayesian after sampling perspective, either the sample average that we can see in our computer is bigger than a half or it's not bigger than a half. Um, it's just a number. It's not a random variable like it is in the frequentist or classical before sampling perspective. So depending on uh, which perspective you take, sort of different questions either make sense and are interesting or um, do not make sense.